Tougher. You saw Her Majesty only yesterday. She's now 90 years old, so how was she? She was fine. She's um, completely over her cough, her awful cold, which she had over Christmas time. Over three or four weeks, she was laid up with that. She's just wonderful, you know. She went to church afterwards. She met about 300 well wishers, took flowers off most of them, and then went and presented prizes to the Sunday school. And uh, you know, she looked she looks amazing. In fact, looking at David Bailey's picture, I think the Queen looked younger yesterday, <laughs> because she's probably had a good rest. And then when that picture was taken, and that was taken three years ago. That's that right. Picture, yeah. No, I think she looks stunning. She's I, just getting younger. Like well, well, you know, I don't know what face cream she uses, <laughs> but I think I like some myself <laughs> because she really looks amazing. Although she's well looked after, let's, let's be right, honest. Yeah. Today, though, Roya, it's a day that Her Majesty <laughs> her suspend alone because, of course, not only does it mark her becoming queen, it's also the day her father, George VI, died when he was only 56. So it's a sad day for her. It is, and, and she always spends Accession Day privately at Sandringham. I mean, the Queen Mother, when she was alive, used to leave Sandringham before February the 6th because she didn't like spending it at Sandringham where, where her husband died. But for the Queen, it's very much... Not so much a day about thinking about her longevity and her milestone, but reflecting on the fact that, for her, Jubilees will always be associated with the death of her... What she sees as the premature death of her father. Um, and, of course, you know, brought a life of duty and service um, to her well before she thought she would have it. Yes, and, Kate, we are now in uncharted territories. A sapphire Jubilee yes. is something we've never had in this country before. No, certainly not. So she became our longest reigning monarch. She... Uh, beat Queen Victoria, so obviously um, marvellously, again, in a quite a quiet celebration. And what they stri strikes me very much is that in 2012, we all got very excited. We said, well, this is a great historic moment. We're not going to see this again. But we really now are. We're five years away from a platinum jubilee, a big platinum jubilee. And simply, it's an astonishing record, an astonishing record of longevity, of service, obviously the combination of her brilliant health and utter devotion to duty. So she's got a bit of a way to go to beat our longest reigning European monarch. That's Louis the Fourteenth, but he did come to the throne when he was a child. So I, I think we can safely say that she, she's probably the winner of those who came as an adult. Quite. Let's not get ahead of ourselves <laughs> at the Platinum Jubilee. Beat the and, French. Okay. She wasn't. <laughs> she wasn't a child when she took the throne like Louis the Fourteenth, but she was still very young, wasn't she? She was incredibly young. She was 25, and she really hadn't expected, just as Roya said, to really be experiencing this level of duty and commitment that it takes to be to be monarch until she was round about the age of 40. So. It is rather striking when you think that she was married in 47 and on the, as you've seen those wonderful pictures there and on the throne by 52. So she didn't have the time that she hoped to spend with her husband, to spend with her children and to have what was certainly seen as then in the 50s as the most wonderful time of a woman's life in the early period of marriage. But it was very difficult for her coming to the throne. She was seen as quite young by many of the populace and certainly by some of the ministers, particularly Winston Churchill, who took some winning over. But once he was won over, he was a fan for life. And, and Roy, that is incredible, isn't it? You talk about she was queen when Winston Churchill was prime minister <laughs> and all the other prime ministers, some of them may be slightly more forgettable, but <laughs> even so, she's had so many and now... Theresa May is her latest. Yeah, I mean, I think that just puts into perspective not just her longevity, but her incredible world experience and her experience of political affairs and world affairs and people who meet her, dignitaries who meet her, are always surprised, I'm not sure why, by just how knowledgeable she is. I mean, she's had, you know, all these prime ministers, all these world leaders, you know, she's about to have, you know, her 110th state visit, people sort of speculate, oh, this is very controversial, her hosting Donald Trump. She has had far more controversial people that she's hosted at Buckingham Palace, and she's... She's above and beyond all of that, and I think that's what's so incredible about her. She just knows how to handle people of, she, of every sort of, from every sort of corner of the world. She is the ultimate diplomat, and to do that for 65 years, um, with not, no one really knowing what she thinks about anything to do with politics, I think is extraordinary. It's an extraordinary achievement. People talk about six degrees of separation. I mean, Her Majesty is one degree of separation from so many icons of the past hundred years. We talk about Churchill, Mandela, so many. Yeah, well, Mandela was in the coach and uh, so was Putin and uh, Ceausescu and, uh, and, and Donald Trump, Trump would be Trump in the coach. Up, but yeah. he, won't be, he won't be holding the Queen's hand, I can guarantee that. <laughs> he might try. Uh, <laughs> if he tries, I think he'll get... Uh, she'll be wearing her gloves, yeah, don't she'll worry. she'll say, no thanks, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> Not Arthur, today. How, how long have you been photographing her? Uh, 40 years, 40 years. For, uh, 1977, I started uh, doing the Royals and... Um, and really, it was really mainly my main job was to find out who Prince Charles was going to get married to. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, bumming along the way, I did a few pictures of the Queen. And, you know, and I've, and I've really enjoyed... I mean, you know, I've been to loads of countries with the Queen now. I've been to Australia and all over the world and met presidents. Um, 
uh, with her, but you know, she is just the same all the time. When she addresses the, the joint houses of Congress, she's just as completely unflappable as if she talking at the WI last week, you know. So she's just an incredible woman who, who totally runs it her way. She doesn't pander to the press or anything. Well, I know you've picked out a few of your favourite pictures, uh, just three of them. Let's yeah. start with this one. Why this, this in particular? Well, this was yesterday when I was saying, you know, about how young she's looking. She how good looking she's looking. She's looking superb. You are absolutely right. And, uh, you know, she was so sparkling. You know, she was, she was talking to a lady who's been a royal watcher for years, and she's asking her how she is, because she's just from a cancer operation, and the Queen knows about that. And the Queen's concerned about her, and to give her a lovely smile as she takes her flowers. And I, and I just think, you know, when I looked at her close, and I was literally from here to Kate away from her, and she looks looked amazing. Does she always say hello to you? She, she, must, she, she has a few are. times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One time, yeah, she's a few times. When you say. make her look she sees, so wonderful, she sees him more than anyone her, else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, but she, but, you know, I mean, she she looks at you and she just gives you a little nod. But you know, with the Queen, the great thing about the Queen, Matt, always is when she smiles. When she smiles, you feel the. Everything's right in the world. Let's have another look at a photo then you've taken of her. Smile. Oh, this one. Look at that. We're laughing. That that's must a, be the races, surely. That's the that's the races. I think <laughs> she she's. Might have uh, won. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when she when she wins, you do know it because she really is beaming. Okay. But that someone's told her a joke, and that's a lovely, lovely picture. Yeah. Someone said Arthur isn't here today. So uh, like, oh no, he is. He is here <laughs> after all. And this and one. That's a bit more formal. That one. Arthur. Well, this is my this is the best tour I ever did when the Queen made the state visit to Ireland, the first sovereign for a hundred years to go to our nearest neighbour. And, um, and she, she just wowed the Irish. And yeah. this is a great tribute to the Irish. That's uh, all the bodice was made out of shamrock. She's wearing a beautiful harp uh, brooch. And, uh, and, and, the people, and the people just loved her. But Katie, look, it hasn't been all smiles, of course. I mean, yes, she went to Ireland where plenty of people would rather there wasn't a queen visiting. There's a certain number of people in this country who don't think we should have a monarch. But I guess the biggest difficulty during her reign was probably the death of Princess Diana. Yes, I mean, certainly when you look at this hugely long reign, there are highs and lows, and I think a great high for her would definitely be the 2011 uh, trip to Ireland in which, in which she had so much success. But the, the, the 90s was such a period of difficulty. We had the very public collapse of the marriages. We had the burning of Windsor Castle, talking about the Queen paying income tax, and then the tragic, horrific death of Diana in, in 1997. Of course, it's the 20th anniversary this year. And it, the initial response from many in the media, from many people, who really expected the Queen to go. And you just show those pictures of her arriving from, from Balmoral, where she'd been trying to look after the boys and saying, I'm here now, I'm here for your Queen. And then she won the country over with a broadcast saying, as a grandmother, uh, and, and praising Diana's gifts. And Roy, the person who's been her, there for her the most is Prince Philip, the only other constant apart from Arthur for the past four years. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, looking back at other Jubilees, um, at their, during their golden wedding anniversary, she gave that speech at Banqueting House saying that Philip had quite simply been her strength and her stay for all these years and that we owed him a debt greater than he would ever claim. He is as important to the monarchy, I think, as her duty has been. Yeah, I don't think she'd carry on without him. Yeah. Yeah, she, she, she depends on him so much. And they're a great team.